Welcome to DevCap, a series where I give you a quick recap of what happened in the dev stream. I'm Ward Wardenson, and I'm here to- I'm your host Creepy Banana, and let's get started. The second part of the 1.0 update is called Inferno. Hmm, I wonder why. That's right, we have finally unlocked the ability to use fire as a weapon. Previously, fire would be used to warm yourself during cold winter nights. Well now, you can start barbecuing the native wildlife of Siva. Hmm, very delicious, is what a warden would say. Both sides are receiving flamethrowers and faction-specific flame vehicles. The wardens have the flame armored car and the destroyer flame tank. The tank's heavy flamethrower will be more effective against structures, while the armored car's flamethrower is meant for clearing infantry. The colonials have the light flame tank, which is their heavy flamethrower vehicle, and they also possess this absolute beauty. The T-14 Vesta Tankette. Dude, that flame tankette, oh my days. I'm not a mechophile or anything, but god damn, that No, you're not allowed to give what? the community artists more what? fuel for their flames, god damn it. I want to put my banana in it. No, 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 it. okay, okay, we're just gonna... <laughs> now, fire deals damage over time, and it can actually be spread dynamically, meaning forests, towns, bunkers, and anything else that is flammable could be destroyed by one pyromaniac. <laughs> Fire will also interact with the weather system. Now to counter fire, you'll have to use buckets of water to extinguish it. But flame weapons aren't the only way to cause some chaos. Rocket artillery is being added to the game. Wardens will utilize the rocket half track and the rocket launcher. Both of them will use incendiary rockets, so you'll be able to do more fire damage than the colonial counterpart which is the Katyusha rocket truck. Comrades will now rain hellfire from Moscow to Berlin. Oh, uh, wrong universe and a really bad accent. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. There's also some new toys for tank players. Blueberries get the Thornfall, an outlaw with a cute little storm gun on the front, and a deadly bone saw mortar platform on the back. The Legion gets the five head tank, a falchion with a 75 mm main gun. The same type of ammo the Warden Heavy Field gun uses. Damn, that's a big gun. But let me tell you boys the sad truth. Size does matter, and the qualities are just packing more. With the 94.5mm heavy field gun. Also, for all the homies who complained, this monstrosity is now happening, so thank you. Emplacement guns are now becoming faction specific. So the old ones are gonna be warden only. And this will be the new Kali EMG, the tri-barrel machine gun emplacement. And this will be the new EAT, the dual arc RPG emplacement. Both sides are now getting a new type of emplacement gun, which I've dubbed the, oh, that's not an artillery gun, gun, because goddamn, these are some big ass guns. The Wardens are getting the 94.5 millimeter version and the Collies are getting the 75 millimeter version. Now for some old vets that are watching, you might be thinking, huh, that 75 millimeter round looks familiar. Well, that's because the battle tanks used to use them. They were removed from the game and I found out why in this video that I made, but they are finally back. But they also brought some friends along. The super tanks. The Collies are rolling out the Ares, a behemoth armed with two 75mm cannons, but it gets absolutely dwarfed by the Cullen Predator, rocking a 94.5mm high velocity main gun and two quad grenade launchers. Now these will have an extremely high economic cost, which means a solo player like me ain't never getting in one of these, so uh, please any clans that are uh, gonna make this and want to be on my channel, uh, pl please invite me, I, I, I just want to touch it. And please, if you're enjoying this video, then touch that like button. Finally, Logi is getting some love with the implementation of facilities. These will be fully player driven. Now they aren't removing the current Logi towns, so these facilities could expand the industrial capacity of said town, or you could just build it wherever you want. Regions that used to be great Logi hubs, or just never had the capacity for industrial production, can now be turned into manufacturing powerhouses. You'll be able to refine, produce, and just scale up Logi production throughout the war. Also, real quickly, everything you see on screen right now is said to be completely player built. Now, these will be strategic zones prone to raids and bombardments, but presumably you could take over an enemy facility, so the troops will have to decide on how destructive they want to be. Here are some of the buildings that will be made in these areas. Refineries, 
factories, storage, utilities, vehicle stations, but all these buildings will require power to run. How we will get power is not really explained, but I presume it has something to do with coal. There's also a bunch of new resources. What they are isn't really explained, but this is definitely a milk can, because the troops need some calcium, dead. Resource automation is finally coming to Foxhole. Oil pipes to safely move around the flammable liquid. Mine carts for local resource transportation. Automated harvesting of raw resources. And fueling stations are also being added. We can now also construct proper infrastructure for ports by using the concrete foundations for the docks and the provisional roads to connect these ports. Stationary cranes are also now buildable, but let's be honest, we all want to build that heavy rail crane to satisfy our inner crane operator. There's some tech stuff, but honestly, I was too busy looking at this beauty to remember what they said, but if I recall correctly, you can now change vehicle variants at assembly stations. So you could roll up in a base Gallagher and change it into a highwayman or a bone law without really needing the tech of that variant, allowing people to choose what they want and preventing civil wars from breaking out over tech disputes. You could also pimp your ride at modding stations to get that cool camo and also all the benefits that come with higher tiers. Now let's get to what you've all been waiting for. Trains. Players will have full control on where and how to build rails. They will be able to make forks, switches, and elevated tracks. Also, cross-region travel with trains has been confirmed, allowing faster and more effective logic connections to be made. This will also necessitate a formation of some kind of railway union between clans to ensure the most optimal network possible, or it could lead to civil war over railway disputes. The train locomotive is the BMS Black Bolt. It has a crew of two, one driver and one fireman, the fireman can make the train go faster by shoveling coal. And again, like all Logi vehicles, they are faction neutral, implying that a outside force is profiting over this endless war. There are two types of logistical cars. The flatbed car, where you can put any package item on, and also the coal car, where the train stores its coal. Then we have the infantry car, where six people can hitch a ride, and also, two tripod weapons can be mounted on top of it for some extra protection. The Colonial Combat Car is the Steel Breaker, rocking a high velocity 40mm on top and a 127 on each side. The Warden Car is the Warsmith, armed with two 40mm cannons and able to transport more people than the Colonial one. And now, a gun so powerful, it can make the bravest heart tremble. The Tempest Cannon. A mobile storm cannon. Now trains have a cap of 15 cars, so technically you can have 15 of these firing at the same time. Or there's like a cap of one per train. Uh, but I don't know, because uh, I wasn't cool enough to be uh, invited to the private dev branch session. And if you're like me and you're not cool enough, then don't worry, on the 13th the dev branch will open up and I'll see you guys there. And the day before that, the full dev blog will be released. Can't wait to see if I'm right on that milk can prediction did. On the 20th, the concept art of Inferno will be released. And then the game will update on the 28th. But in the meantime, check out this video where I explain in detail why the battle tanks were removed in the first place. Also, if you can find it in your heart to subscribe, that will make me very happy. Okay, bye!